from part-time bouncer to owner of one of the biggest MMA organizations in Europe. How proud are you of the growth of Octagon? Oh, well, I'm very proud. Well, our team, our fighters, the fans, we have great support and it's amazing. Like, it's, it's just, you know, dream come true. And recently you've seen the expansion into the UK, seen big events already in Manchester. How much do you want to do in the UK for the rest of 2024 in terms of Octagon? Oh yeah, we have it planned uh, one more event uh, in UK and we are preparing something super special. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure that the British like public will be uh, will love it and it will join us like in, in the yeah, big style. Can I get an exclusive? What is that special thing that you've got planned? Uh, it's a well-known names, I would say, that we are trying to put together uh, right now and announce it soon. <laughs> in terms of names, I want to ask that, in terms of a uh, company like Octagon, how do you go about scouting stars for your organization? Actually, it's interesting because at the beginning when we were like entering the market, it was kind of hard. Like We, they, they were, we were too much like uh, foreign for fighters, gyms. Even we were selling 20,000 arenas around Europe, but here it was like, ah, oh, where are you? And now it's so much different. Like the managers and gyms are approaching us by themselves, like guys, I want to offer you my fighters. And now, and now we are building the relationships between the not just fighters and gyms. Uh, so we are often traveling here, visiting uh, those uh, places and searching for talents. And there's so many here. So now it's much better. Things like the one million pound or one million uh, euro tournament help to attract fighters to the organization. Oh yeah, hundred percent sure. Especially this year, it's a lightweight division, and it's like one million euro we divide between the fighters. We know winner will take uh, three hundred thousand. It's crazy. Like nobody pays this money in Europe, so we are super proud that we can do that. And you talked about your roster. There's some stars on this. Uh, we know how lively Shamrock can be, not only in the octagon or in the, in the cage, but also out of the cage at press conferences. We've got Aaron Aby, who's headlining the card, the man of the people. Who is the biggest superstar? Who's the hottest prospect in octagon right now? Hard to say. Definitely, it's those you named right now. I would also add uh, Akon on this, but we will see after tonight. Yeah. If he will win, I think that, that could be a game changer for him. Especially because people take him seriously, okay, and especially in England, okay, we, England, we have now the big representative in this pyramid, so it's worth to watch and follow. So he could be the next uh, big name, and for sure, uh, actually, in Frimpong, even he's at the beginning of his career, but how he's selling the fights with the trash talk and everything, and then after the fight, he's giving the hand to opponent, okay, now it's over, like it was all built up, so now let's be clear. It's amazing, I love it. And in terms of that, do you think fighters need to pay more attention to the showmanship aspect of it? Of course, they need to sell themselves um, and the skills inside their cage are big, but it's also about making sure that people know who you are. Are you encouraging your fighters to make sure they build their online profile, their social profile, to make sure they're big superstars? I mean, it's necessary for success because this is not just pure sport. It's a show, it's a show business, right? There is this word, it's still there. And what, that's why you need both, like be a good fighter and also you need to know how to present yourself and show off. Now, you know, it's a big fight for people's attention. So it's the same in our sport. So if you have these two things, then I would say there's that X factor that can make you a big star, a really big star. And Otacon are known for their big shows, the flashy shows, especially in Europe. Um, 15,000 fans in Cologne, that was a big event for you guys. When will we see a stadium show in the UK with Otacon? Oh, yeah. I mean, we did. Actually, it was 20,000. Oh, sorry, 20,000. Uh, very proud about it. No. Uh, we are doing the stadiums in Europe, like 27,000 in June and 50,000 in uh, Germany in October. Yeah. And I, I see the England. Oh, it's actually very hard with football stadiums because you need a roof <laughs> because it's kind of raining too often. But I would say like two, three years. I, I, I think that if you go well, we can do it here. And we have to because this is a football country, right? So where else? Just football stadium must be the ultimate goal here. For sure. Um, I've been watching the fights tonight. It's been a very exciting card so far in terms of the prelims. Looking at the open scoring, it's an interesting approach that you guys have taken. Do you think that, that helps to create exciting fights? It's very different to other organisations where we don't find out the judge scores till after the fight. Do you think the open scoring means the fighters go for the, the knockout or the finish way more? Yes, yes, 100% sure. We saw it in many fights actually that 
the the team check the score okay we are losing so now push on now or never uh, but interesting so it helps the the fans they know how the fight goes right so there's we since we started the whole thing there is not any more this surprises in the end you know like people think that someone is winning and at the end it's someone else so this is the advantage what, what is interesting that people the, the the team still don't adjust it they don't look there they don't know even with the first or second fight i heard in in the headphones that it was 2-0 and the team was saying, saying to his fighter it's your one on one you know because they didn't check it's interesting so they, they are still like learning to use it it's funny but it's game changer i would say for for how the fighters approach the fight and how fans can enjoy the show and you talk about how that's a game changer you're a game changer yourself in terms of your approach to running an mna organization you've had to take out loans to keep the company alive you've rejected uh, sales or rejected buyouts what's the next risk that you're going to take as the owner of octagon to make sure you go to the next level <laughs> Uh, it's a big project, yeah, to, in, in for UK that we are preparing. It's huge. It's it's bigger than we ever did something like that. Uh, we are, I would say, we are touching uh, stars, so that will be a huge risk. Yeah. And do you pay attention to other organizations in terms of how they go about things to maybe take some ideas and help improve your organization? If we are helping, uh, sorry, one. So do you ever pay attention to other organizations and see what they're doing in uh, order yeah. to make your organization a lot better? Uh, no, no, rarely, occasionally, we are trying to focus on ourselves because it can mislead you from your own way. Because for example, I can start to be like scared, oh, they are doing something good, oh, let's do it also. But you are doing it because they are doing it, not because you believe in that thing. So we are trying to go our own way, do things we love and we feel the passion and not, you know, try not be distracted by these things. The main event here is between Aaron Aby and Sam Creasy. It's a rematch of a fight they had in another organization. It's for the vacant flyweight title because Elias Garcia was stripped of the title. Will we see him fight in Octagon again? We'll see. Now it's not a plan, so we'll see. Because, you know, he didn't defend it. It's kind of bitter taste, I would say. But yeah, never, never say never. I mean, we are not like angry or something on him. That's not, not the thing. Perfect. Thank you so much, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's perfect. Thanks.